and welcome to Google Drive in under five. Today we're going to be looking at Gmail and I'm going to be giving you the most important settings that you can have to set up your email for most efficient workflow. I'm going to click over here under the, under the gear and I'm going to go hit on settings. And just to briefly go through each of these panels, we're going to make sure that our maximum page size is as small as possible. You can go down as low as 10. You can go up as high as low as... You can go up as... You can go as high as 100. My personal recommendation is keep this low, and that's going to hopefully help you keep your inbox level low. Images, I'm always going to check to show, display, external images. I'm going to keep my reply behavior reply versus reply all, so that way I don't accidentally reply to my entire group, school, or organization. Over here, we have default text style. We can, of course, change this to be um, smaller, bigger, or change our font on us. Conversation view is one that you're going to want to play with. If I have conversation view on, that means that all emails of a like subject or thread, sometimes we call it, are going to be together. This is good because this actually shows less emails in your inbox. However, if you accidentally hit the delete button, you run the risk of deleting all the emails in that conversation and not just the one or two that you decided that you don't need anymore. So you might want to keep that on or off and get used to using it one way or the other. Send an archive is important. If I have show sender archive button, that means I can send an email to somebody and automatically reply that means I can send an email to somebody and the email automatically gets out of the inbox and goes into the archive folder. If I hide that, it runs the risk of being an email that's sent and then I additionally have to then archive or label or file that email. So sometimes the show send an archive button can save us a little bit of time. Undo send is another important one. I can actually send a cancellation period. So in other words, if I send an email, I've got between 5 and 30 seconds to recall that email if I wanted another chance at it. Stars is another important one. By default, I've got one star. It's a yellow star. But I do have the option of having one star, four stars, or all stars. Now, these stars here are personal. We can up in the Omni search here, we can do a filter for all emails that are starred, but Google does not differentiate between a yellow star, a red star, and a purple star. It treats all of these different. So these are really visual aids. Perhaps you're going to say that your friends are yellow stars and your brothers and sisters are orange or red stars. You can do that, but Google does not search between the two colors or between these boxes over here. I recommend having all stars because that way I have more options because I'm a visual person. Desktop notifications, your notifications are over here. We have all of our notifications. So if I turn this on, that will mean every single time I have an email or something come in, I'll get a notification to it. Keyboard shortcuts automatically by default, they're off. I like to keep mine on because I'm one of those people that likes to look at keyboard shortcuts and I memorize things. And I always believe that if you have to move your hands away from the keyboard, that just slows you down. Under button labels, I like icons, again, being visual. My picture, this is a way for others to see who it is. So I always keep a picture here. People widget. This shows a people's widget up on the right side of your email. In other words, if I'm emailing you and I know that my account has had access to your email address, I actually see your picture, I see your email address, and I have some interesting information about you so just so I know who I'm emailing. Next, we have create contacts for autocomplete. In other words, when I send a message to somebody, is it going to automatically add them to my contact list? This could be important to you if you're starting off on Gmail for the first time. Of course, going on down there, we have our signature where you can create a customized signature. We have personal level indicator. So if I want to have no indicators, that's the default. Or if I want to show indicators, that shows an arrow by messages sent to my address or a double arrow sent by only me. Snippets, we can show snippets on or off. And then finally at the bottom here, we have our vacation responders. And this is important because this also plugs into the Gmail app for our mobile devices. If we have something here, we can also turn that on or off from our mobile devices. 
Clicking over here to the next tab, we have labels here. We can see all the labels that are in our left side. For instance, I have inbox starred important. If I don't want to see the starred or the important, I can hit hide and they go away. The idea here is to have as little things on the left as possible so that way we don't get bogged down with a bunch of nonsense. So I always take these categories. I hide them. I always take drafts and I hide them. I always take sent mail and I hide it. I always take everything if I can and say only show if unread so that way everything is as clean as possible. A clean inbox is a happy inbox. If I just click on the default and I click over here in inbox, that means every email is treated the same way and you're just going to have a list full of emails. But if I come back into settings one more time and I go over to inbox, I can change the way that this works. I can have all the unread ones first or I can have all the starred ones first. And if I hit save on this, you can see here are the starred emails and here's everything that is not starred. This is really, really powerful. Of course, you can change this every day. You can change this every, every at, Of course, you can change this every day. And of course, you can change this any way that you need to whenever you need to. But this inbox type is certainly important. Let's say, for instance, that you're working on a project with a specific person. You can have everything in that person's label automatically at the front of your email box. So that way, you know where those important messages are. Everything down here, I really don't worry about. The biggest thing is these inboxes and knowing how to change this information here. Under accounts, I just don't worry about it. This talks about if you want to add or subtract other email accounts, I always bypass this. This is where all of our filters here, you can see that we have a filter set up for anything that matches this email address. It's going to do this or that. I can, of course, edit this filter or I can delete the filter. And the more filter, the more filters that I have, this will just get bigger. And of course, I can create a filter from here. The next tab is my forwarding and my IMAP. I don't worry about this. I keep it the way it is. Keep everything default. The next thing is chat. You'll see here that I have chat turned off. If I have chat turned on and I hit my save settings, now I'm automatically going to have this chat up here. For some, this might be helpful because with chat, you can actually have inner dialogue and inner conversations between specific people. But if not, then it just gets in the way. So because of that, I turn chat off. Next thing we're going to do is labs. Labs are these important little functions that you can add to your Gmail. You can say here that I have a few labs already set for canned responses and my unread message icon, but you can certainly turn these on or off. It doesn't hurt. And all that it does is just give you a few more extra things to do with your email. The next one is a new feature. It's offline. You can install Gmail offline. So in other words, you can have this automatically download all of your Gmail onto your computer. Perhaps you're going in an airplane or you're going to be in a spot where there's no Wi-Fi. You can then send and receive all of your email. And then once you get back into Wi-Fi, it'll automatically connect and automatically send out. And then lastly, over here on the right, we have our themes where we can set our themes. Of course, we can change all of the pictures that we want here. And if we have a picture that we don't want to use anymore, we can come back over here to dark, to blue, or to light, and we're back into our normal Gmail screen. So here are the settings. Here's the recommendations that I have. You can choose whichever one you want. No matter what settings you're doing, you really can't mess with anything unless you're maybe in the forwarding, IMAP, or under the accounts. But everything else, feel free to play with. Um, recommendation, of course, is don't leave things stuck. Try to make this as customizable for yourself as possible. The more you know, the more you do, the more you can do, the more you can be efficient. And a clean inbox is a happy inbox. <laughs>